Hello and welcome to the Installing Apex 4 to Oracle Database 11G on Windows Server 2003 64-bit edition. This tutorial is brought to you by MNS Consulting. On the screen is a list of the assumptions and requirements required for this tutorial as well as the location of the full in-depth article. To begin we're going to log into our server. As you can see I'm doing this on a remote machine via RDP. I've already navigated to where I have the Apex software downloaded. I'm going to go up to the file menu and I'm going to click extract all. You can also use WinZip or WinRAR or whatever you have. I'm going to tell it where I want it to and extract it to. In this case I'm going to extract it to the root. It will automatically create a subdirectory called Apex. It will start the extraction and then we're going to fast forward through the extraction and things that take a long time just to save some time in the tutorial. And then once it's done, I do not need to see the extracted files. And I can click Finish. And now we're ready to begin the actual installation. This is done through the SQL command prompt. So we go Start, Run, type in CMD so we can get a command box. Then we're going to navigate to our working directory, which is the Apex subdirectory that was automatically created by the extractor. Now we're going to enter the SQL plus system by entering SQL plus. On this machine I have multiple databases installed, so this is the prompt I get. We're logging in as the sys user. I then have to put the at sign and the name of the database I'm going to be installing to, in this case testdb, and I'm logging in as the sysdba role. And we're going to feed it our password. Okay. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to run the installer for the, for the development environment. So we're going to feed it the name and then feed it the parameters it needs. The parameters are discussed in the full tutorial document. And then we'll hit enter and we'll let this run for a second. Oracle 4 includes numerous changes and updates to the way the interface works, the appearance of it, as well as things it can do and how it performs them. Uh, its uh, installation procedure is a little bit more complex than 3.2 if you were used to 3.2 so we do recommend that you go through the full article at least once or twice before actually attempting this. When it's done it dumps you back out to a command prompt so we need to re-log back into SQL Plus. Again I feed it my the username which is sys and then I feed it the what database I'm going into and we're logging in as the sysdba user and you feed it my password. On new installations of Apex 4, and if you're changing from a development to a runtime environment or vice versa, you do need to change the Apex administrator password, which is what we're going to do here. Feed it the command, and then we feed it the new password for the admin. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to configure the PLSQL gateway which is we run this script and we feed it the base of the working directory, in this case C, since we install, since that's the base. This also will automatically load the images, so we don't have to worry about that. Now since we're on 11G, what we have to do next is unlock the anonymous user. Which we type in the command here to unlock that for use. We hit enter and make sure that it goes through OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to verify that the XML DB HTTP server port is up and running. So we're going to type in this command, which will grab that data for us. If for any reason this comes out and gives you a result of port 0, it means that the XML DB unit is disabled and the command to enable it is on the full website. Now the next thing we need to do is there's two sections here that are fairly, fairly complicated as I'm running through them here and that's the enabling the network services in 11G and also the enabling of the indexing of the online help system in, in uh, 11G for Apex. Apex changed the way that that process works so there's a couple of steps that are involved. Now as you can see here in the tutorial we're kind of running through them. 
Uh, it involves a couple of test statements and then in our case since we haven't done anything before we have to create a role grant privileges to the role and a couple of other things the exact procedure for how to do this as well as the code involved is in the full tutorial as well as the checklist to determine which statements you need to run and the order you need to run them in the other thing that we have to do is once this is all done here and just about done gotta run one more command here once this process is more or less complete what we do is we then have to do a quick check of the job queue processes the transactional support as well as certain SQL script operations in Apex require the job queue processes to be set high enough otherwise they can time out or not run at all um, this number will vary depending upon your setup uh, I happen to know in advance from going through this tutorial a couple of times that on this machine here that I'm doing this on that is currently set at 1000 that number will vary depending upon what you're doing and in the uh, full technical documentation from Oracle there is some information about how to proceed and how to uh, check that number and what you might want to set that number to but we're going to take a quick second here and now that we're done uh, enabling the online help and enabling the network services we need we'll check our job queue processes with this command here and as you can see it was at a thousand and then it's going to quickly flows through this what we're doing here is we're checking for previous previous versions and previous privileged users um, any previous version that is installed you need to remove the users that were associated with those in the privileged role in this case Apex 3.2 was installed so we have to remove the Apex 3.2 user because they are a privileged user and once we remove them what we then have to do is since we're on 11G is we have to run a command which will fix a potentially a potentially invalid ACL and maintain integrity on the system so that everything works properly and again all of this all this code and more in-depth uh, explanation is in the full article but once that's done we can go ahead and we can actually get out of our SQL plus and our command prompt do that by typing exit once and then exit again and now we're ready to test to see if it works I'm gonna be loading up Mozilla and Firefox on this to show you this uh, basically just because the IE on this spe specific remote machine is in a significantly security enhanced state so I'm gonna type in my internal server name this won't work for you at home this will work for me because this is actually defined on this machine and then once we get in and I know it works I then go to my Apex admin page type in the user admin in all caps type in the password that we gave it since it's the first time using it we do have to change it obeying all complexity rules meaning it must be at least three letters different there must be upper and lower case numbers and at least one special character once that's done we click return it'll ask us to actually log in for real here and then once we're logged in we're gonna scroll down to the bottom the lower right of the page and as you can see it says version 4.0 so there we have it Apex 4.0 installed to 11G on Windows Server 2003 64-bit edition we hope you found this tutorial informative and we hope you enjoyed it thank you